Through the hands of those who dedicate their lives to creating remarkable food, I offer you a mouth-on approach to Quebec's farm-to-table culture. We'll eat our way across the land, meet the artisans behind the produce that celebrate the beauty of our terroir. On this episode of A Foodie Guide to Quebec City, rural style, I am taking you to Paul Neff. Neuf is a regular weekend destination of mine. Driving west along the Fleuve Saint-Laurent, I go because I like to meet with the people who make the food I eat. For example, here at La Fromagerie des Grondines, the artisans make some of the province's most recognized organic cheese. I'm meeting with Charles Trottier, who takes care of the cows, who produce the milk, that's transformed right here into cheese. And it's all happening in deschambault Grandin. Charles, thank you for taking the time to sit. I know it's a very busy day for you here at uh, the Fromagerie. Give me an example how, of how you spend a day. Like, I'm, I'm thinking you get up really, really early and you get up, yeah. to, you know, what, uh, what does a day look like? Uh, normally, uh, I get up at uh, four in the, in the morning. We spend uh, most of the time in the field. I was born uh, here, and it's the farm of my grandparents, my parents. It's your heritage. This is yeah. your family. Yeah. You, you saw every piece of land change with time. Does the environment have a huge impact on your production? The most important impact. We uh, work on an uh, organic manner since more than 30 years. There's a very sustainable way of doing um, business at the same time in the environment as much as in your business model as well. It's very important that our enterprise was completely sustainable. At each step of our production, in the field, until the people. Since uh, April, and until the middle of November, uh, November uh, the cow goes on the field. Mm -hmm. They're very happy cows. <laughs> <laughs> we think. <laughs> You're preparing for winter right now. Um, how much of a challenge is that? Very important challenge because we have to feed for six or seven months all the cattle uh, with only dry hay. And if we were listening a little bit to what was happening in the news this summer, it's a challenge to get the hay. Yeah because uh, of the very dry weather we had yeah. this past summer. The organic production help us because the, the soil is more uh, efficient. So raw milk and organic production come hand in hand. In French, I, I said uh, it's not a, a, a mode, mais un mode. It's not a style, it's a way. Yeah. The milk is the most important thing. At each step, we can decrease the quality with our manner, our uh, transport. We do some effort that any producer don't have to do. So are you referring, therefore, to the organic certification? Yeah. Absolutely. So you go beyond the certification? Yeah. It's not one thing, okay. but 10 or 12 little things who made the difference. And that has the direct impact on the quality of the cheese that you make. You select the animals also on this way. We produce only cheese made from raw milk. Which is exceptional. Not many uh, cheese factories here, even artisans, do raw milk in Quebec. Five or six only. Five or six only do raw cheese? Yeah. Why do you keep on doing it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's our mission. Yeah. Right now, the cows are in the field in front, yeah. or they're in the barn in the back. We're a few meters away, and the cheese is literally made just here in this building. So everything is in a controlled environment. You control the product from the grass to the maturing of the cheese. I think it's the only way to produce our cheese. It's difficult to maintain the quality if you not control 
all the steps. The steps. Can we taste the difference of those actions that you do in the cheese? Absolutely. Chiefs? Yeah. If I think you we want. should taste, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think we should taste. <laughs> So this is the new cheese that you're developing. Yeah. That's it's just a, arrived on the market. It's a cheese like a reblochon. Yes, it's a traditional tartiflette cheese. Yeah. Why? Why did you want to develop this? Because uh, we love this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a, as simple as that. <laughs> it's, a, it's always a coup de cœur. Huh? Oh, wow, the smell. Mm. First of all, that's the smell of the rind is what truly awakes the senses already. I smell it and I'm salivating big time. Wow. It's important to um, learn to our, our consumer to uh, take time to, wait, to taste the cheese. Not eat, but taste before eat. I can taste the field. Yeah? I can taste the beauty of nature around me right now. I'm looking around, I see wood, I see grass. I feel the air coming in from the St. Lawrence. It's a breath of fresh air and the texture is so creamy. <laughs> I'm definitely making a tartiflette with this. This is beautiful. Yeah, we are so, we are very happy too. Charles, I feel that what we need to understand is the respect that you give to the land, that in return is also for the animals and the people who work with you. I have so much respect for you as an artisan, for the people of La Fromagerie des Grandines. Thank you for taking the time to meet with me today. Thank you. Longue vie à la fromagerie des Grandines. Merci. Merci, Charles. Cheese is just one of the many examples of products where you can actually taste the local terroir. Although it's inspired by European techniques, Quebec cheese has an identity of its own. There's someone I want you to meet. I'm taking you to Donnacona by the Chemin du Roi. This is where you'll witness the rich heritage and history of Nouvelle-France. The city of Donnacona is named after the Iroquois chief, Donnacona, who lived on the banks of the Rivière Saint-Charles in Quebec City. Now, if you have time for only one stop in the region, this is it, l'Épicière de Comté the small family-operated grocery store and lunch counter sells only local products. Meet my friend Claude Z. She's the owner and creative mind behind this beautiful place. Claude Z! Hi, Alessandra how are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm very fine, thank you. I'm That's so happy <laughs> to see you. Good, <laughs> That's the good, kind good. of energy you yeah, get yes, when you walk yes, in. Yes, madame. L'Épicière de Comté. Claude Z, thank you for taking some time from... My God, is that David Bowie? That's David Bowie. That's David Bowie. That totally represents who you are. You're so dynamic, so creative. You're actually a, like an arts teacher before. That's right. <laughs> That's exciting, yes, though. Yes. How did you go from, from being a teacher to being a businesswoman? I love the education, you know, whatever education it is. Mm -hmm. But now it's, it's transforming into like, uh, I don't know, food education, just yeah. like you do. Can you tell me a little bit what's the essence of l'épicière de Comté? Well, actually, we, I, I've been here for like five years now, and there was something missing. This place needs a good place for coffee, first of all, mm -hmm. for a good coffee yeah. from La Petite Brûlerie. And also, why not have a place where we can have a diversity of many products of Quebec? Then, why not cook these beautiful products? Can you give me an example of what's cooking in your kitchen? Yes, madame, and you're gonna love it because that's what you were searching for last time you came here. Wow. I got the pig with the bone. No, you didn't. Yes, okay, here's I the story. Did. Last week, <laughs> last week, I was traveling here across Portneuf because I was looking to make a piece of meat with a shoulder, and I noticed that it was really hard to find in butchers. And I came to Claude and I was like, ah, oh, maybe she'll know. And that's what it is, right? When you go straight to the artisans, you didn't do that, did you? My God, yes, it's so I exciting. Did. It's in the oven right now. <gasps> that smells so good. That is exactly what comfort looks like. <laughs> that 
is what my grandmother used to cook me every time I spend some summers with her. At the end of the summer come fall, which is this period right now, slow cooked pig pork actually, but anyways. <gasps> look, 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 look. Check this out. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. Mm -mm. The fat. Oh mm. yeah. And you can taste, that's where the flavor comes from no. in animals. <laughs> Never forget that. You cooked it with some cider. Yes, I did. And what else did you use? I used apples, onions, mustard. And those are products that we find just beside here in your boutique area. In my boutique area, when they're available, they're there. There are some products, but mostly some producers that I really enjoy working with and they're so passionate about what they do. So, Alison, this is the cider I use, the okay. crackling carbonated light cider. Yes. From our friends from Le Somnambule. Mm -hmm. Look at that beautiful wall with all different flavors. I, I see a whole bunch of different <laughs> products that are capturing my attention. This company here. Ferme Apicole Mosaic. Yes, so yes. they do a lot of honey products and their <laughs> hives are all over the Parna area. That's right. They have a variety where they use uh, balsam fir. That's so right. it tastes like Christmas, a little bit of Christmas <laughs> in there. They'll add some sage to their honey yeah. and Sea berry, yeah. sea buckthorn, yeah. which is one of the most popular products to come out of Portneuf. Yes, that's what uh, La Ferme d'Achille does, and they do it so well, and it's also a family uh, run business. You have some Charlevoix products. Yes, so I do. So we're in the Portneuf yeah. right now, and we can travel with the flavors, yes. with the products of what you have here. I yeah. like when people come here and they just discover things. When I cook, at uh, lunchtime, that's what I do, you know. I put this on the table and people taste and they just ask and we talk and discovery is, is the most magnificent thing and that's education. That's what's keeping me here with this kind of creation now. It's like a performance, I would say. It's all you about know? passion, right? It's all about passion. It's respecting yeah. the land yeah. and it's all about the passion. Food is, is everything, you know, that's why we're in good health. That's why we share. That's why we love. I'm, I'm really happy about that. Thank you so, so much for taking some time for me today. <laughs> Thank you. The many panoramic views of the Fleuve Saint-Laurent along the Chemin du Roi are breathtaking. You'll cross some of the province's most beautiful villages like Neuville, Cap Santé and Deschambault. Every Saturday during the summer, a farmer's market is set up in the heart of the village of Deschambault. It is the best place to get a taste of the local food culture. The talk of the town is Julie Vachon. She's an artisan chocolate maker that looks to local herbs and spices to create unique flavor-filled products. I've known Julie for a few years now and her talent truly fascinates me. Let's go talk to Julie. Julie, thank you for accepting to meet me in your chocolate shop. Welcome to the shop. The smell here is unbelievable. You walk in and there's like warmth in the air. This is my favorite chocolate shop. Thank I you. I love your art. I love your talent. Every opportunity I have. <laughs> no, but it's true. Uh, I think you know pretty much every opportunity <laughs> that I have to talk about your, your talent, your art, your products. I do it. We're going to meet with Mélanie at the Petite Brûlerie who was literally here, physically here before, and you had just one small section yes. right there. And now That's really small. you grew, you now own this whole building. What sparked the idea of opening up a business in a rural area? I knew I didn't want to live in the city anymore. Why is that? Noise, people, stress. I had fun in Quebec City and in, in other cities, but I knew I wanted to grow up in, in a smaller place. Yeah. I fell in love with this village. What did you like about it? The river, the view, the beautiful houses, the quiet 
side of things. Here I have uh, the bakery, the coffee shop, the Magasin Général, which is a small e grocery store. Uh, we have everything I can think of. I'm really glad I chose to be here and I feel like I'm gonna grow old here. Now it's been seven years, so I literally I saw babies grow up and for them the chocolate place have always been there. And I, I know everyone's name and I know what they like. Sometimes it takes like an hour to go three houses away to the grocery store because oh. I know everybody and I, and I like that. Sometimes when I have leftovers uh, like cookies from yesterday or, or big batches that I didn't sell enough, I give it to my friends and neighbors. When I do that, I put on a cheap crown yeah. of the dollar store. No. And they open the door, I'm like, hey, you're like the clam fries or. Oh my god. Yeah. You're like, I like the to do that. Fairy. Wow. Can like I move next door? <laughs> no. You can, you're welcome. <laughs> There's something magical about this place. Um, it is. The community is really powerful, something like that. You were welcomed within yes. this community. I felt very welcome. Yeah. Are you at home here now? Yeah. Do you believe that your chocolate is art in a way? Yeah, I feel like I create and I try and I explore. I, I do think that artisans in gastronomy are artists. Mm -hmm. Once you understand the um, matière, yeah, ça va de soi. Yeah, it, it, it comes about itself. You make it your own, basically. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things to know, but it's been 16, 17 years now. So I have the luxury to just try and do, and I know it's gonna work and I can go straight to the goal just by thinking, oh, I'm gonna put this and uh, infuse that and put some crunchy in it. And, and when I, I do something that I don't know about, I just taste a lot. You like the um, passion fruit uh, With hops. hops. Holy crap. Um, ganache. Yeah. This, uh, I've been tasting it the whole day because I want it to be perfect and I thought, Hops is, is really powerful, so drop by drop, I would mix and then taste, oh, not enough, not enough, not enough, until, oh yeah, perfect. And I think it represents up to what you're able to do with your customers. I think they've grown to know you, they understand that you do high quality products, and they're gonna follow you in that creativity. Do you feel that that's the- Absolutely, I have that chance, yeah. My customers are, are really loyal, uh, even um, the ones that only comes uh, three or four times a year. Even them, they, they'll come back. In high season, summertime, uh, we have a lot of tourists uh, mm -hmm. for the ice cream. I have people from everywhere. Sell them, they're gonna come uh, the year after uh, because they, they remember it was the best ice cream they had or they, they like the place and uh, mm -hmm. I pay attention to the mood too of the place. And low season, that's when I need and I have the chance to have uh, all of the locals that are uh, loyal and come back. And because of them, I can live of my passion here in my small village. And that is true luxury when you're an artisan. Absolutely. Julie, I love you. Thank you. <laughs> I do. Thank you. Long live Julie Vachon. <laughs>
She serves specialty coffee, mostly organic, that she selects, imports, and roasts on location. Quite impressive for a small town business. Melanie, thank you for taking the time to sit down and have a little coffee. Shall we cheers? Pleasure. <laughs> Melanie, you decided to do something that not a lot of roasters do in the province of Quebec. You decided to go above and beyond and choose to work exclusively with organic coffee. Why is that? It's a choice I've made from the beginning. It was natural for me to order only organic coffees because for me, it's more like a core value. Normally, organic coffee means produced by small producers, yep. ethically sourced and sustainable absolutely with practices that are good for the environment in general and for the people that live on the production sites mm -hmm. how does the community respond to that choice do they understand what organic coffee means do they understand what small batch means or that ethical philosophy that you're talking about I think they understand yes because we're in a small community and I think they must compare it to when they buy their organic vegetables to the local farm. It's a choice of buying something organic. Mm -hmm. You can find them in big city centers, but you don't always know from where it comes from. But when you buy from a smaller company more directly, yeah. you can get the information you want and you can trust the seller. In relationship to your business here, being that you're close to the community mm -hmm. and you have this privileged relationship, you're educating them at the same time. That's what I tried to do since the beginning, yes, because uh, it's not always like that in coffee business in general. There's a lot of education to do for the product and from where it comes from, what's the process of roasting it and selling it. People don't know a lot about coffee. There's something, there's something so heartwarming. There's something very inspiring, that relationship you have with the community when you own a coffee house. Does that inspire you to pursue, to continue what you're doing? Yeah, of course. It's the main reason why I, I do it. I think that the coffee shop is the place in the town where you can feel the vibe of the locals. It's where the people gather, it's where the people meet, it's where people come and talk with their friends and the other people. So that's mm -hmm. where you can feel the spirit of the place. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not from this town, it was the best way for me to get in touch with the community here. And it's really the gathering spot, the coffee shop. Yeah. So when you own or work in a coffee shop, you meet everybody, you get in touch with everybody in, in town and outside of town. And yeah. it's the best way to get involved. Yeah, I think it's the best way to travel as well. From yes. one country to another, yeah. you start with the coffee shop. <laughs> yeah. It was several years ago when I was living in Montreal. I was studying at university and I was working part-time in a, in a roastery. Back then, I was working for a coffee company that used to buy its coffee from cooperative coffees. I was studying international relations at the time, yeah. so that's what interests me most at the beginning, like all this relationship of buying something, a product from so far away yeah. and maintaining a, a relationship that is kind of close and on the long term with some producers. Yeah. And you, you just moved here because yes. before you were where Julie Vachon was that we just met. Mm. That's where you were in the house. My roommate. Yeah. <laughs> What motivated you to move here? Well, for six years, Julie and I were sharing that space over there on the Chemin du Roi, and both of our businesses were starting to grow and grow and grow, and we were kind of in a small space. Yeah. And so this house, it has been like five years that it was for sale. I, I guess it was waiting for me. I guess it was, right? Yeah, there was already an apartment above for me to live in. On the front, you have the coffee shop and behind you have the roastery. And it was designed to be kind of a community house for the people that were going to the church. There were two wood fires to warm them up and they would gather there before going to the church. It kind of feels appropriate that it's a coffee house now. Yeah. Walking here in the streets around near the church, you smell the roasting of the coffee. Yeah. And the first thing you see when you walk in La Petite Brûlerie is a window 
where the roaster Julie is working and yeah. she's roasting coffee. It was coffee. important for me to put that window there because I didn't want the production to be hidden. Why not? I, because I wanted people to know right away when they come in that we roast on site the coffee. Mm -hmm. So through the window, you can see the roaster, the machine, yeah. even if it's not working at the moment, and you can see my, uh, my coffee roaster, Julie, work on it. Melanie, maybe for those of us who don't necessarily understand what are the steps implicated in roasting coffee, how does it work from the moment you receive the green coffee to serving a cup of coffee? Actually, it's not that complicated. You just need to import the green coffee and you just need to put it in the roaster. All the roasting part is difficult because there's a lot of uh, things to have in mind when you roast a coffee, like the roaster, it runs on fire and uh, you need to keep track of a lot of data all along the, the roasting process. But once it's done, you can wait a couple of days until it degasses and yeah. then you can serve it like this with the good equipment. Yes. And then you do the latte art and then yes. you enjoy the coffee. <laughs> all easy like that. It's as easy as that. <laughs> Mélanie, merci beaucoup. Merci, à toi. Is it me or did we just meet some of the most welcoming, beautiful people? And that's exactly why I love Paul Neuf so much. And you've just witnessed all of those reasons. They're so welcoming. His sense of community is vibrant and at the heart of every one of the artisans that we met today. Next up, a foodie guide to Quebec City is going that way along the St. Lawrence River. We're going to l'Ile d'Orléans.